What we're demoing over here is some of NVIDIA's latest technology uh, for the PhysX SDK. And here what we have is a fur simulator, real-time fur simulator, that's running 100% on the graphics processing unit, not on the CPU. Uh, in this particular demo, we have uh, 840,000 individual particles being simulated as 100,000 individual strands of fur. And they're being simulated in real time on the GPU, while at the same time, all of that fur is being rendered and lit and shadowed as well. And as you can see here, it's uh, completely interactive. So the simulation is not canned. Everything that you're seeing is reacting to the environment happening at that time. Uh, if you wanted to change the level of detail, you could shorten the fur. So um, each individual strand of fur is composed of nine particles in a line segment. So as it got further away from the camera, you might use you know, five or two. And what would happen is the hair would just get a little bit shorter, but you wouldn't, wouldn't notice it. So this demo is, again, some of our latest technology. We've had destruction for quite a while here, but this uses our new rigid body solver, and everything, once again, is being simulated completely on the GPU. This is demonstrating real-time fracture. Um, a lot of times when you fracture for games, it's been pre-calculated, and things break only where a designer has set it up that it can be broken. This case, all of the break, all of the fracture is happening based on what he's doing at any given time. So wherever he moves the cursor, he can cause the fracture to occur right there. And this can simulate literally tens of thousands of individual pieces and all happening in parallel on the GPU, leaving the CPU free to run the rest of, the rest of your game or whatever. Uh, again, both of these technologies are uh, our latest tech that, that we're bringing online and showing for the first time here at, at GDC. So here we're showing some of our technologies that are already incorporated into games and game engines. In this case, all three of these demos are in Unreal, uh, the Unreal Engine. We are integrated in both Unreal 3 and the upcoming Unreal 4. This is a demo of a technology we have called Turbulence. It's a real-time particle simulation. We have tens and tens of thousands, actually over 100,000 particles being simulated in real time. And it's not um, just canned. As you can see, everything's interactive. It's interactive with the player. It's interactive with the weapons. It injects forces into the world. And it's a really cool new class of effect that people haven't seen in games before. And it's all made capable by taking advantage of GPU acceleration, where we're, uh, instead of like your normal CPU might have four cores, we have a thousand cores available that we can run a simulation on. And by paralyzing it, we can do things at a scale people have just never seen before. And you can see it produces some pretty dazzling looking effects. This is a demonstration, again, of our destruction technology, but the demo I showed a moment ago with the real-time fracture uh, has not yet been productized, whereas this is happening in a production game environment. Here we've uh, pre-fractured, so the fracture occurs where he shoots, but based on uh, content that was authored by an artist. And everything in this entire room is fully destructible, and it's hierarchically destructible, so you can break it, and then break it again, and break it again. Uh, and the entire simulation of the physics is happening, on, again, on the GPU, not on the CPU. So we can have thousands and thousands of interacted, interacting rigid bodies, and you'll see there's effects where things hit things which cause other things to, to explode and destroy. And then, you know, uh, sometimes you may have to argue why somebody needs a feature in a game. I don't think you have to argue why people want to blow stuff up. I, I think it's pretty fundamental. And the more people can interact with the environment and, and change the environment that they're interacting with provides a really compelling gameplay. This is all integrated into the standard UE3 package. In fact, all of these effects that you're seeing are part of the standard UE3 that everybody licensee has available. So this kind of technology could go into any game someone's working on if they chose to focus on that as part of their gameplay. So a lot of people saw the Samaritan demo last year at last year's GDC. This is the same exact character from the Samaritan demo uh, in an environment where people can interact with it. Because a lot of times when someone sees cloth in a video, there's a completely different sense from when you actually interact with it with the joystick. So as you can see right now, Brian is controlling the motion, the animation states, and all of the reaction of the clothing reacts to whatever that motion is in real time. Uh, all of the cloth simulation, again, is happening on the GPU as well. So that allows us to offload the work 
uh, so that you can get these higher class of effects if you've got the video card uh, capable of running it. Um, and you can see at, uh, most the there's enormous amount of simulation happening from his sleeves to the belts to even his tie and uh, just seeing how it interacts with with the animated character is really compelling. So you're seeing a lot more of this in video games today where the characters are just moving to another level of, re of realism. What he's doing not, right now is showing some debug visualization features. Um, things like you see there, that's describing the distance at which the cloth is allowed to move without it um, giving it its certain limits. And the reason for that is, is if you, uh, in a video game, people get to do pretty heroic things, right? Well, if we ran a straight physics simulation, he might do a barrel roll, and his, uh, if we do a straight, pure physics simulation, his uh, clothing might get wrapped around his neck. Right. Well, we don't want that. So the artist gets to put limits and say, hey, the cloth can move, but it can only move this much. And that allows them to have a great deal of control. This is a visualization of what the collision is. So when we're doing the physical simulation, the clothing is colliding against those volumes that are being highlighted there. Um, so you're seeing that this technology is part of the standard UE3. It's been in there for over a year. And you're going to see more and more clothing, uh, uh, basically these physics simulations of all kinds running in games uh, for UE3 licensees.